<laughs> this video tonight is going to be a good one. This video goes out to those who specifically know that they have an anointing and know that they have a gift from God, something that they need to be doing. But it seems like nobody around you accept it and they won't embrace it. For that reason, there are two specific scriptures that I want to discuss tonight. This is also going into the series dealing with why most people don't go to churches these days. They choose to build platforms. The first scripture comes from the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 24. Jesus says, Truly I say unto you that no prophet shall be welcome in his own home country. The second scripture we'll be discussing is, it comes from the book Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Now for the first scripture that comes from Luke chapter 4 and verse 24, let me give you some context. Jesus was in a synagogue and he was asked to speak. Now when Jesus spoke, because he was a master teacher, his words were powerful and both astonishing. The people in the congregation could not believe their ears. The words were very eloquent and like I said before, they were very powerful. Now mind you, this synagogue was in Jesus' hometown where he was born and raised. No doubt there were people who watched him come up from a little boy. Once again, Jesus' words were so powerful and everybody in the congregation couldn't help but to put their gaze upon Jesus. But their whispers weren't of how amazing his speech was all they could whisper amongst each other was, isn't that Joseph and Mary's son? Now because of this, Jesus begins to tell them that they would no doubt call him a physician and ask for healing. But because they felt like they knew him, because they were so familiar with him, he wouldn't be able to perform any miracles where he was. Hence the scripture saying that truly, I say unto you that no prophet will be welcome in his own home country. Imagine thinking that you know God, being in the presence of God and thinking that you know him so well that he isn't even able to heal you. He isn't able to deliver you. He isn't able to counsel you because you feel like you're so familiar with him. And welcome him to the stage. Big round of applause for Jackson Heights' own Mr. Randy Watson. Yes, Randy Watson. <laughs> that boy's good. Mm -hmm. Good and terrible. Check your chocolate! Check your chocolate! You know, mothers have what's called a natural maternal instinct. It's something that they can't help. It's innately formed the minute their child is conceived. So most mothers look at their child as their baby no matter what. The child could be 20, the child could be 35, the child could be 60. The child could be well off a millionaire, but that mother will always see that child as her baby. Doesn't matter what the child goes on to do, how grown the child is, that mother will always see the child as her baby. In that instance, that's okay. But we're dealing with in the churches today, especially if you're in a church where you grew up in, where people are familiar with your background, all your shortcomings and your mistakes, all the pitfalls and the times you bumped your head. Maybe it even isn't even that, but they just feel like they know of you. When God gets ready to walk you into your calling, it's hard for these people to accept who God has called you to be. Now think about this. We often preach about this in the church, but when we do, we're often referring to people that we've left behind in the world as we make this transition over into following Christ. But in reality, it's not the people in the world who bring up your past. It's not the people in the world who hold your past against you. It's often the people who are fellow believers who know you as well. See, when you're in the world and you get a nice car or you get a better job or you get a better house, the people in your family, it's the people's closest to you that usually talk about you or put you down or say, who does he think he is? He thinks he's better than everybody. Oftentimes in life, it's the people closest to you who are the most jealous of you, who wish the most 
bad things to happen to you. And sometimes it's subconsciously they're doing this. Yes, with their words, they please you. With their words, they glorify you. With their words, they edify you. But the spirit, and we all know that in God, the spirit is most important. With their spirits, they hate you. With their spirits, they're secretly mad for you. When they're in their spirits, they secretly hope that you fail. They're praying for your downfall. After all, they don't want you to be elevated higher than them. Now take that into the church, because remember in my previous video, I told you we bring worldliness and politics into the church. Many a time when a prophet is risen amongst the ranks of people who know him or who are familiar with him, who watched him rise through the ranks, they're not going to accept the message of God from you because they're only going to be able to see you for what they think they know about you. In the Bible, it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new thing. He is a new creature. All old things are passed away. But in church, we seem to forget that the most. Now, this is coming from firsthand experience. First of all, let me preface my comments by saying this. I love ministry. I love the house of God. I love fellowship, genuine fellowship. But me firsthand, I've witnessed people who have been in the same ministry for 20 years and still have not progressed further in their ministry, further in their calling. Is it because they continue to stumble? Is it because they still have habits and hangups? No, God says many are the afflictions of the righteous of the righteous, but he delivered them from them all. God delivered them from them all. Sometimes the men and the people in our lives can't see past what they think they know about us. They'll never let you rise amongst the ranks. They'll never let you walk into your calling because Jesus himself, who's a master teacher, who is God in the flesh, the word made flesh, his own people did not recognize the prophet that was among them. What makes you any better than Jesus? Now, tell me if you felt this way before. You can get up and preach an awesome word from God. And maybe you get a couple of hand clap, claps, a couple of head nods, but a stranger can come into town and preach a message and everybody standing up and cheering and applauding and all of these accolades. That boy is good. Listen, that's the nature of what Jesus was talking about. They'd rather hear it from a stranger whom they know nothing about, whom they don't know if this person has any afflictions, if this person has anything they need to be delivered of, but because they don't know him, they're willing to acquiesce, they're willing to listen, they're willing to be beholden to that person. But because it's you, they're probably not gonna listen. Which brings me to scripture number two that I wanna encourage you with. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, which reads, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Now, why do I bring up this scripture, you say? Because, you see, sometimes for men, and that includes women as well, as men, it's hard for us to see you as somebody other than little Brian, little Jesus, son of Mary and Joseph, the carpenter's son. It's hard for us to accept that you've grown and that you're maturing in Christ. We're always going to notice every little mistake you make, and we're always going to revert back to same old Brian, same old Jesus. Yeah, we know him. He ain't got no business telling us nothing. Yeah, it sounded good, but look who said it. See, with men, love is impossible. See, with men, true forgiveness is impossible. See, with men, elevation and spiritual maturity is sometimes impossible. But with God, everything is possible. All things are possible. Meaning forgiveness is possible. True love is possible. True growth, deliverance, and spiritual maturity is possible. See, you could go somewhere else where they welcome your gift, where they accept your gift, where they embrace the teaching that they are getting from you or whatever your gift may be. They'll embrace you wholeheartedly because God says that your gift will make room for itself. We live in a world where everybody wants to copy other people. Everybody wants to imitate other people. People are jealous of other people's anointings and gifts. But if you'll just learn to tap in 100% to what God has got for you, God says your gift will make room for itself. Meaning the people that God's got that he'll draw onto you will truly embrace who you are. So if you find yourself in a situation today where you don't feel welcome as a prophet, or you don't feel welcome as an evangelist, or you don't feel welcome as a teacher, you might want to take a look at that scripture in Luke chapter 4 and 24 and realize that you're not alone, that you're not the only one who's had to suffer this. The master teacher himself, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, also suffered this. But guess who suffers greater? It's the people that don't embrace you. 
Because they did not embrace Jesus, he was not able to do any miracles for them. And it was to no fault of him. Of course, Jesus would have liked to heal people in the land. Of course, people would like to set some captives free, especially where he came from. But because their minds could not think outside of the realm of, that's Joseph and Mary's little boy. They wouldn't be able to receive healing. They wouldn't be able to receive deliverance. So shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. Whether that's creating a platform to get your gift out of there, whether that looks like you traveling, whether that looks like you doing anything that you need to do to be able to fulfill your destiny in God, don't let anything in 2024 hold you back. Don't let anything make you feel guilty. Until next time, y'all be blessed.